welcome back to another episode of Real Talking ELT. It's me, again. Uh, and for this session, episode, oh my god, it's been so long since I've done these. For this episode, I'm going to be talking to any and everyone, actually, um, in regards to classroom management. Uh, and not necessarily the classroom management inside the classroom and telling people where to go and, you know, breakout rooms and, and all of that type of stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about the classroom management that I think comes at the very beginning when you're starting to work with either your students at schools or classroom um, private students. Sorry. So one thing that helps you in classroom management this is my belief. Also, I just, I feel like I'm going to have to put a disclaimer. I'll just write one out and put it under these. All of these opinions expressed are Kelly's opinions and they do not associate with anybody else. Okay, disclaimer. Got it. So this is just me thinking um, that we need to establish clear expectations and routines for a positive learning environment. Because if we establish them in the beginning, and then I think it's just it makes life so much easier. Expect expectations are set. This is how it's going to go. This is how it's going to run. Not that you're going to run it like a military boot camp, okay? But, you know, obviously a classroom is much different. We have that exchange of ideas and stuff like that. And I think the exchange of ideas and exchange of expectations is extremely important in building learner autonomy. But we do need to get expectations very clear, right? Um, so let me, let me give you examples. So an example of this is when you first meet with a private client, when you first meet with students in a school, when you first, when, whenever you first meet, I always like to ask students like, what's, what do you want? First of all, like, what are your, what are your expectations of how the dynamic is in the classroom? because that's going to inform you a lot about what the student is willing to accept in terms of activities, in terms of lesson planning, materials, but it's also going to give you the expectation of, or the understanding of what they expect your role to be as a teacher, because sometimes they say, oh, well, it's up to you. I hate that answer. Personally, I hate it. Well, you're the, you're the expert. True. I'm the expert in language and teaching. However, if you if a student says to me, oh, it's completely up to you, I get like kind of a red flag when they do that because that means that they just want to sit back and passively participate in that environment. Everything is 100% up to me, including how much language they acquire over a period of time is up to me. And that is not... That's not true. That's not gonna happen, right? So we know that we have to have active participants in our classroom. We know that we need to uh, share information freely back and forth, and we need to maintain a level of respect. What I'm looking for is what type of dynamic they're interested in. And sometimes they say, well, I want a lot of conversation. <laughs> especially A1 and A2 students, for whatever reason, they want conversation classes. <laughs> and then like Bs and, and C level students are like, oh yeah, no, I, I understand that I want to mix. But A1s and A2s, what for whatever reason, are always the ones that demand 100% conversation classes. So you can manage those expectations real quick. That's like, how can you have a conversation if you don't have the structure or vocabulary to even engage in that conversation to express yourself? That's a good question. So. Um, again, back to expectations. So setting clear expectations. This is how I typically run my class. This is the type of, of structures that usually, or the type of activities that you can probably, without a doubt, 100% of the classes, you're going to have one or more of these activities in a sequence that I determine is going to be efficient, effective, and productive for you. And so I let them know that because then we can we can have a genuine conversation of, well, these are the type of activities that are going to be beneficial for you. Which ones would you like to prioritize? Which ones do you feel most comfortable engaging in? They say conversation activities are great to engage. To, so for us to prioritize and engage in those conversation activities, first, I need to be able to give you the building blocks 
to have that conversation. So if you have that those those key components, then we can certainly prioritize and we can extend out that conversation component of the class. But that conversation component of the class is not going to be the only thing. And so I never exclude anything. Zero. You nothing is excluded from your course. You will work all of the skills and all of the systems. You're not going to exclude any of them because Kelly's personal belief is that we need to work all of the skills and all the systems to actually improve proficiency. What we can do is we can highlight some and we can give them a little bit more weight in terms of timing, but nothing is going to be excluded. And then I ask them, are you okay with that? Yes, that sounds great. Good. So now they have the expectation that they will be doing some things that are not the things that are necessarily the most enjoyable for them, but they understand that they have to be done in order for us to move forward and for them to have progress. Because if they don't have progress, then like, what are we doing here, right? I also like to establish routines. Some routines that need to happen. <laughs> Homework or things that they do outside of class has to happen. And I have a very honest conversation with any private student of mine or with any student that comes into the school. I said, what, how much time do you have to dedicate to studies outside of, of your classes? There's this bird. I don't know if you can hear it. It's like a mockingbird. I swear to God, it comes to my house every day. And it just, it's not like that casual little tweeting and, and nice. Do you hear it? It's like an alarm annoying. Anyways, okay. Um, routines, homework routines need to be set and established. And I tell them, listen, you, I, my expectation for adults, because I deal with adults, my expectation for adults is not that you sit down for two hours every day and study English. That's unreasonable unless you're in very extenuating circumstances. Like that's unreasonable. People have lives. They've got jobs. They've got families. They've got kids usually. <laughs> they've got things to do. They also need to go to the gym, go to the grocery store, pay the bills, like exercise. Like it's, they have a whole thing. But what I tell them is my expectation is that you take this seriously because you're investing time and money into it. So I need you to take it seriously and I need you to ex establish some sort of consistent routine. And if their consistent routine is 15 minutes a day, Monday through Friday, at the end of their lunch break to do one exercise per day, I'm happy. I'm happy because that 15 minutes per day at the end of the year is actually going to accumulate to be like, like 50 hours or something like that. Like that's insane. First of all, 15 minutes a day and that's accumulated to 50 more hours of concentrated study time. I'm happy with that. If they can do more, fantastic. But that's not the expectation. My expectation is let's get you consistent first and let's slowly increase the amount of time. If you reach a point where you can't do the amount of time and you're just feeling frustrated, reduce it back down again because that's your threshold. And there, now we have expectations of classroom interaction, classroom dynamics, established and routines established. If you're working for a school, I don't think you probably have a lot of control over having these things written down or anything like that. Um, I take notes when I do my needs analysis interviews <laughs> with all of the students of the school. And so I put it there in the notes. So something is recorded. So I have it there. Well, you told me that you are going to be able to establish this as a routine. Have you been able to do that? No. Okay, so let's find a viable solution. If you're working privately, I would include it in a shared document. Something like, let's go through your needs analysis, ask questions, write information down, get some goals, get some objectives put some percentages of the amount of time that they want to be doing once dynamic, another dynamic, depending on what's going to be most productive for them, most effective for them during their, their course of the thing, and share the document with them. Say, hey, listen, this is what we agreed to, okay? I'm gonna do my part, here's your part, establishing expectations. This, I think, 
is going to resolve a lot of the issues you have in classroom management, especially if the student starts becoming late, they start not doing homework, they say, oh, I'm super tired today. Uh, can we just can we just talk? Which is fine. That happens. They're adults. Like, give them a break. You know what I mean? But if it turns into something that is repetitive and every week they're asking for, oh, uh, it's been a long day today. Can we just talk? It's like, okay, but this is the fourth week that you've asked for that. And let's go back because I want to re-establish our expectations again because the expectations that I had that I've been preparing lessons for is this. Do we need to change that? And it just resolves a lot of those problems and it makes those conversations a lot easier. Listen, you said this. This is not being done. Obviously, over a course of time, if it's like one class, calm down, okay? <laughs> over the course of this past month or this past six weeks, I've noticed a trend and I would like to talk to you about it because I really want you to get the most benefit out of your classes. I want you to have the most progress as possible, but we both have to be on the same page and what we establish as our expectations for how the classes were going to go, how, what routines you were going to be able to maintain are not being met at this point. So. Let's go back and see what's realistic. If every day 15 minutes, which I find to be very suspicious that 15 minutes every day is out of the realm of possibility, well, is three, four times per week 15 minutes? Is that possible for you? Uh, do you need to consolidate it onto one day because 15 minutes you get too distracted? What's going on? Because at the end of the day, whether you're working privately or whether you're working for an institution. You need to have progress. Your students, students need to have progress. That's it. I don't know if that broke up there, but <laughs> here we go. But students need to have progress, right? And so one way that I judge the effectiveness of my teachers in classes is if their students have made progress. Not 100%. Obviously, I can't say, oh, student progress is the only marker of teacher success. Absolutely not. But it's one of the markers that I look at. Are there students making progress? Yes. Okay, then something's going right in class. Something's effective. If they're not making as much progress as we anticipated, we can then investigate. But at the end of the day, you need to be focused on what are your students' objectives and Week by week, month by month, are they getting closer to those objectives or not? And a lot of it has to do, in my opinion, with going back and establishing clear expectations and routines at the beginning of the course. Yeah, because everybody's super impulsive and they get real excited when they start when they start learning and they say, I can study an hour a day. And I'm just like, no. And I tell them absolutely not. Nope. No, unless, again, unless there's extenuating circumstances, like they have something immediately uh, coming up. I'm like, no, no, it's not sustainable because you just told me that you've got, a, you know, you work a job, you've, you're you married, you got two kids, you enjoy going to CrossFit. Like you just told me all of those things. So the fact that you said, I've got an hour for just studying every day, I just know it's unrealistic. I've been working in this industry way too long. It just, it doesn't, Highly unlikely, highly unlikely. That's like a one percenter of the, the students that actually are super dedicated. It's just not realistic for the average person, right? So set the expectations, put it down on paper, have the conversations if you need to, have another conversation if something's not being met. And that way, everything's super positive. Like, listen, it's not possible for you to do it every day for, for 15 minutes. Okay. So let's find three days out of the week that you're able to do it. That it's like call, it's like calmer for you. It's definitely going to be able to happen. Maybe not during work or after work. Cause you're tired. Let's try to do something before work. Would you be able to wake up a little bit early, find a tech solution that's going to work for them? Something, but that's going to be a much more positive learning environment because they're going to see progress too. Students are motivated by progress. They're not motivated by how much you entertained them. If they see that they're making, they're making small steps towards what they want to do eventually, that's going to work out for them. All right, I'm going to cut it here. So 
things to think about, possibly things to implement if you're a private teacher, maybe get in a form together. It's kind of like a student contract type of thing. Not necessarily a contract, but like, I don't even know what you would want to call that. But you know what I mean? Like a shared document that's like, okay, this is where we are. This is where we're going. Here's what we both agreed to do. And another idea for that is to make it like month by month. So then you just check in. Is this still true? Do we need to make any adjustments? Right? Because sometimes things change in people's lives. So there you go. Um, that's the first swing at some <laughs> some practical things that might help you with your students. Okay, I will see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk and ELT. Want to join the conversation? Head on over to Instagram at Kelly Peddington ELT and send me a message. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube or Spotify channel to stay up to date. And of course, take care of yourself, your health, your vibe, and your tribe. Until next time.